Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 13. In this tutorial we're going to add in some sound effects when we hit our obstacle, we're going to add in an enemy or two and we're also going to give our camera a little shake to add in a little bit more effect when we do hit an obstacle. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, last tutorial we added in the ability to hit this rock, stop and fall backwards. So let's add a little bit more to that now. Let's first add a sound effect so as it kind of has like a thud and a fallback noise as he hits it. So let's go to our audio folder and let's go to SFX and I'm going to bring in this crash thud sound and you can get this on my website if you head over there. Downloads and assets, go to the Endless Run series and you'll be able to download it there under tutorial number 13. So much in the same way as we've dealt with sound effects previously, let's duplicate this latest one and let's rename it. And I'm going to call it the same as the sound file itself. So crash thud. And a thud is just a douche kind of thing. So let's drag and drop that onto there. And next thing we need to do is we need to modify the script, which is on this big rock. So let's go to big rock. Let's go to obstacle collision and head in there. And let's add in another variable, which is going to be that sound. So public audio source and I'm going to call it same as the file name crash thud with the camel casing lowercase c there and this is going to play at exactly the same time as when we hit the rock so it doesn't really matter whereabouts you put that line of code here as long as it's somewhere within these three lines of code so crash thud dot play up close bracket semicolon and save so let's head back to unity give it a second to compile and then we just need to drag and drop that crash thud onto there and let's test this out hopefully it should work first time There we go. So that's okay. Obviously you can use any sound you want. You don't necessarily have to use the same ones I do. So next thing, let's add a little bit more to this and let's give the camera, not a massively violent shake, but a little shake, you know, to say, oof, you've hit something. So on our player, if I can find them, we have the main camera. Now the main camera itself doesn't have any, any animations or anything attached to it and by default we don't want any animations to play. And the way we're going to shake it is via a quick little animation. So let's go to our animations folder, make sure we are selected on main camera, go to animation, click create, and I'm just going to call this cam shake. Save and press record. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to make the camera go forwards just a little bit, then backwards a little bit, then forwards a bit more, backwards a bit more, just a couple of times back and forth. So we're gonna set our first keyframe as where it starts, the exact place it is right now. So the placement is gonna be uh, exactly where it is. So we're gonna do this on the Z or Z. So let's have this as minus 4.01. So you can see that you can move back and forth like that. You can see it in the preview down there. I should probably set that back. There we go. So I want the camera shake to last maybe a second and a half, but I want it to move quite vividly back and forth. So what we'll do is let's say by round about here, frame 20, that the camera has moved to about there. Uh, in fact, let's have it as minus 2.5. We can always change the animation if we need to. So then by here, it is, let's say, minus 5. So it's moved back quite a bit, but I'm thinking it might be too much. But like I say, we could always adjust. So 20 frames along, we'll have this as minus... Um, 
Let's have it as three, maybe. What was this one here that we set? 2.53. So yeah, I gradually want to bring it back to its original position, shaking it back and forth. So by frame 80, let's say we want that as minus 4.5. And let's say by frame 100 that we want it as, um, gosh, minus 4. Let's have, let's have that and see how that works out. Again, we can always change. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of moving the camera back and forth quite sharply, but then not as sharp by the time we get to the end of the animation. So let's go cam shake and let's undo loop time. So we gonna have that playing once. And what I am going to do is on our player, I'm going to instantly turn off move player because I want to be able to see this happen straight away. So let's have a quick look. Yeah, I'm not quite happy with how that looks. So let's modify our animation a little bit more. I mean, you could spend a lot more time what I'm going to spend on this animation. So it's, you know, it's up to you how you want to do it. So I might move uh, these instead of being 20 frames apart. Let's try five frames apart each time. It's not going to look particularly nice, but then let's have that as 10 frames that as 10 frames and see how that shape looks. Yeah, so I, th I think a lot of it is just playing around with that particular uh, animation itself. I mean, there is loads of different ways of doing this and making it look better and smoother, but essentially all I'm trying to do is just make it look um, not smooth, but, you know, just a bit of a shake to the camera so we can see something visibly happening to Timmy. Uh, and I th think, yeah. Okay, let me see how that looks. I should have pressed record there, but I guess it doesn't really matter. There we go. Okay. I think that shape might work well enough. So let's carry on with what we're doing instead of wasting time now. Uh, let's turn our player move back on. Let's go to main camera. And let's turn animator off. The only animation this camera will ever play is going to be that shaking. So if we press play now, we should be able to see that the camera is just normal. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our script where we collide and we need to declare the camera as a variable. So public game object. Uh, I'm going to have it as main cam with a semicolon. And then we will say, as Crash Thud plays, we'll have main cam dot get component and in spiky brackets, animator, double close bracket dot enabled equals true, semicolon, and save. So if we head back to Unity and click on currently big rock main cam, we can say that the main camera itself just gets added on to there. And I do have an error in the console there. That's fine. So let's clear and let's press play and see how this now looks. So obviously no problem there. There we go. So that's the general idea of how you can add that to the scene. I would recommend playing around with it a little bit more than what I've done there. I've only done this for, you know, being quick and convenient, but play around with that animation as much as you need to. Okay, so let's now add that script to another object and just see how it pans out. See if we hit these other objects just fine. So we know that this particular, um, I forgot what it's called, component. <laughs> Dear me, this component here, which is a script, we can actually copy that component. And if we go onto this tree right here, we can paste the component. If I do it correctly, uh, paste component as new. And there we go. So effectively, all we've done is copy the exact statistics from the rock to the tree. 
and I didn't tick it as trigger. So I think I did this last tutorial, didn't I? I, I started and didn't tick it as trigger. Make sure you do that, otherwise this is just not gonna work. There we go. He's hit the tree. So again, we can do it with this rock right here. So make sure you're on the main rock on there and paste as new. Make sure we tick his trigger. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's add to that log as well. Uh, so right click and paste as new. And yeah, his trigger. That's all good. Okay, so I am going to crash into that log and just make sure that is okay. There we go. So occasionally you may need to kind of modify how this uh, plays out. Now, if we look at it a little bit closer, it looked like Timmy didn't even touch the log and he kind of crashed. And that is true technically because he collided just before the log. So you may need to move things around a little bit just to make sure things align perfectly. And obviously this comes down to a bit more precision development take the time to develop these things a little bit more you know these tutorials i rush through a lot of them just to kind of get the point across and show you how to do it you should be refining these a lot more than what i do in the tutorials take the time between tutorials to actually do that okay so let's bring in some enemy obstacles now so just here i'm going to add in an enemy obviously we're going to hit him and same kind of principle is going to happen so how do we do that well Let's create a new folder and let's go to here and call it enemy obstacles. So obviously different themed levels, you're going to have different types of enemies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this folder right here. Now I'm going to leave a link in the pinned comment to this particular asset on the asset store. I didn't create this asset. Uh, obviously all credit goes to the creator so yeah like I say if you want to use this asset that I'm about to use it is in the description uh, the, well do you know what yes uh, in the description and in the pinned comment um, so head over to the asset store download it if you want if you don't want to that's completely fine no worries at all so I'm going to use um, let's use this turtle shell as the first enemy I'm going to place him right there it's up to you how you want to play around with it. You know, you can add uh, whatever things you want to it, make him whatever color you want. Um, so I'm going to add in uh, this texture. So if we go to turtle shell and let's just add in the texture. There we go, make him a bit blue. And yeah, so effectively what we're doing is the same as the other obstacles because although it's a different type of obstacle it's effectively going to perform the same kind of um, function it's going to stop our player so on turtle shell mesh i'm going to add in a component and let's add a box collider and you may need to move the collider itself. I think it's just dependent on the kind of range you want to be able to touch this thing. Because right now, if we leave the collider as it is, Timmy could jump over it, but he could technically glitch through these spikes. So it might be a good idea to kind of shift the center of where this is. So if I have that as one, you can see it's too far. If I have it as point, in fact, minus one, it's just not even there. So play around with whereabouts this should be. So that looks fairly decent for now. And same as we did with this particular thing, we can copy component, go to turtle shell mesh and paste component as new. And you can see right there, all good. So if I press play and get to that turtle, I should be able to, in fact I realise we haven't implemented jump yet so I can't get to him. A bit silly wasn't it really? So what I'll do is I will move him just to here. In fact I'll rotate him 180 degrees as well because he's facing the wrong way. There we go. Now we can see him. 
same just there. So hopefully I should be able to run into him. Oh, I've done it again. Oh dear, I've done it again. Is trigger. Do you know, it makes me wonder how often, because I do that, you know, if I, if I didn't do it every tutorial, how many seconds would it save every tutorial? There we go. Perfect. So you can add in multiple versions of that enemy. So, you know, duplicate him, move him over here. And there was another one in this little pack as well, if you wanted to bring that one in. Again, it's entirely up to you. I'm, uh, I'm going to delete him out of that slime mesh, but effectively, it's the same thing. So if you want to look for other enemies, different types, different varieties, yeah, br bring them in as well. But as I say, if you want to use this one that I've used, it is on the Asset Store, and the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. So, next tutorial, I know we haven't done jumping yet I know because of this log, but we, we will get onto it, don't worry. Next tutorial, the plan is we're going to create an end screen. So whenever we hit something, we're gonna have at some point a fade out because we'll wanna go back to a menu. And we'll also have an end screen to say how well you did. And that end screen will modify as we go further into the series. But effectively, all I want to do now is get a complete circuit created. So we start, we count down, we run, we crash, we have an end screen. That's where we're gonna go to. Like I say, jumping will come later on in this series, so don't worry about that at all. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.